What a good sound. <laughs> I know. Actually, we have great acoustics yeah. in here, man. This is where I should start doing them all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, hi, everybody. Um, hopefully, we'll give it a second for people to join. Um, but we are coming to you live from our grooming salon, and we're actually in our cat room. This is our cat groom room, and there are pictures of kitty cats all around. It's frightening. Um, and we use this room, um, Rachel mostly uses this room to groom kitty cats and small little critters that maybe don't do well with barking dogs because you may hear the barking dogs in the background but those, those are the dogs in our grooming salon and that can often scare kitty cats and other little small critters so we have developed a small little room off of the back of our reception area that stays a lot quieter so it's easier for us to come to you and talk to you more about these grooming tips so i'm introducing elena elena how long have you been with our grooming salon i've been with you guys i think almost five years now wow yeah and before us you were a mobile i was mobile right? and then i uh, got my start at pet smart okay off to academy. so i've been doing this for almost 11 years now so 11 years and elena is as you might guess by her hair um one of our color specialists here at the grooming salon so if you've ever seen any of the pictures of the dogs who go out colored up Elena is generally the responsible um, offender. Here. Yeah, don't, don't, send, don't send a mob or anything. <laughs> don't send a mob. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, oops, it is a great thing. Um, it's so fun. I know who's the one dog that loves to just get colored oh, Truffle. Up? Truffle. Yeah, I love Truffle. He's a good dog. So Truffle comes in and is always up for a good time. He was a Grinch at Christmas. He just went out as a tiger. Yes, he he's um, been tie-dye. He's been a Lisa Frank cheetah. He's been, um, I think I made him a zebra before. It's just, he's... <laughs> He's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, so it's lots of fun. I know um, my little guy, Newman, comes over to Grooming Salon, and he has a mohawk and a tail color, and he's always getting colored up, too. So lots of fun stuff. But we're here to talk to you about in-between grooms. A lot of you, um, and I don't want to single people out here, but um, doodle owners, um, we're talking to Before she you. begins, let me go ahead and clarify this real fast. I am a doodle owner, okay? <laughs> there are lots of doodle owners here. <laughs> so, so it's, not, it's not a bad word. It's just... It's not. I'm not saying it is a bad word. But what I am saying is that I think there is so many misnomers about yeah, their breed coats. Absolutely. And poodles have been crossbred, and doodles are so um, such a variety at oh, this yes. point as far as coat, um, color, length, right. needs, and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So... Maybe a scruffy labradoodle doesn't need the same as a golden doodle, Correct. that kind of yeah, stuff, um, and bernadoodles and all that kind of stuff. And so we see probably, and maybe I'm generalizing here, but the most um, misinformation about doodle coats yeah, and, and, and not understanding the matting and the seriousness of that. So I definitely wanted to cover that topic. Um, but we're going to talk to you a little bit more about how to keep your pet's um, coat uh better between groom, grooming sure. appointments because it makes your job easier makes Absolutely. it more comfortable for the yes. pet it's more enjoyable for everybody all the way around <laughs> makes it less expensive oh, so yeah. let's talk about that let's go uh, okay well first and foremost you know we're gonna bring up expensive i'm gonna go ahead and just right out of the gate if you're getting a doodle expect to have to get it groomed that's just how that goes i mean that's not just doodles though that's any breed of dog. You do have to maintain the coat. You do have to maintain the skin. You have to make sure that they're living their happy, full life. If they're not doing that, they're not going to be happy at home. You're not going to be happy, and it's just going to be a big whole thing. So just any dog in general, make sure you understand. It's going to require grooming. Even short-haired dogs, they shed. So that's going to require some kind of grooming. Otherwise, you're going to be living in a furry house. What's your favorite tool for a short-haired, smooth coat animal? Oh, dude, I love the Zoom group. Yeah. Zoom Groom is my go-to. Um, if you can see, I've already worn this one down pretty well. Usually, uh, yeah, they're really spiky. They usually come to a point. <laughs> <laughs> you see them over in the store. They definitely are spiky. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us what these, these tools do. Okay. Uh, so, the Zoom Groom is actually, it's a pretty good, it's got a good price on it, so you don't have to worry about breaking the bank. But what it is, is it is a massager slash hair remover for short coat dogs, um, and you can do it in the bath so you can do it wet or you can do it dry and the cool part about it is you don't have to worry about going a certain way you're not hurting anything if you go against the grain on the hair so you can go circles up down left right does not matter and it'll start forming this honeycomb pattern you pull it off and you just go all over again um i do recommend using them wet though that's probably one of my favorite things to do like if you're doing a d-shed trying to get as much of that hair off as possible when you weigh it down with the conditioner before you blow it out just do a nice good brushing on it and you'll get a lot of hair out with this thing absolutely that is my go-to um and Great you can shedding. oh yeah super for shedding 
You can use them on longer hair dogs to loosen up coat. You're not going to get the same result, though. It's more for your labs, uh, your pointers, your beagles, stuff like that. They have that really short coat. Okay. So let's get medium length next. Sure. Let's talk about that. Um, if we're talking medium length, I think that any good slicker brush could probably do you some justice. It just depends on what you like. I mean, I brought a bunch of different sizes of things. You know, this thing right here, I think it's about 10 bucks. And it works really good, especially you get out those thick doodle knots that don't necessarily go all the way down to the skin. Um, but then, like, you know, you got this one right here. It's a little smaller. You know, that's that's a good go-to for that also. Now, I noticed some of these pins are a little bit more bent. Mm -hmm. um, and some are a little bit more straight. Mm -hmm. What's the difference with that? Does that mean anything? Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they came out with the idea that if it's a longer pin and if it bends, you're typically going to be able to brush through the dog better because not only is, you're not just hitting that surface with that straight pin, it's taking the hair with the, with the crease and going with it as well. Okay. So um, the fact that they've been making those longer also, because you can see how long yeah, this bad boy is, sure. means you can get down into that coat really, really, really well. Um, and with these, I'm assuming we brush only one way. Yes, you, you are just going to go with, with the coat the on that. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of times you can use these for doing a lot of your... Um, day-to-day -day maintenance. You just really have to be really careful what you're doing because, you know, it's the same concept of if you ever brush your hair, it's going to hurt, you know, and just keep an eye on what you're doing. But yeah, these are really good for medium coat dogs, also long coated dogs as well. Um, I do use a lot of these. Yeah, you have like 25 here on the table. <laughs> so they're all pretty much from a different company. They're all different size. The pin links on them are different. The pin count in them is different. It really depends on what you want to do. Um, I'd say a good beginner brush, if you want one that's actually going to last you have a really good time, and you know, maintain it house. I would certainly go with Chris Christensen. They're they were the people Grim who level. technically, and what I heard, they are the ones who technically started with the whole coral brush and whatnot. But um, you know, there's knockoff versions of this that you can get. You know, that will work mm -hmm. just as well. It's just I know this one is durable. I've had it for a very long time, and I do use it daily, literally, and I do about seven to eight dogs a day. So. It is something that they get used on a regular basis, and it's still in one piece, and I've had it for a very long time. So that would be my go-to right there. So you would go to these, mm -hmm. and that's the first step. Yes. Go and use the slicker brush. Go use the slicker brush, because what that's going to do is it's going to take the, the surface knots, and it's going to start to break them up, and you can work further down into the coat with those as well. So you're breaking up the top, and then it's separating out easier, so you're not seeing the mat, and you go and you work a little bit dark, deeper down it. Mm -hmm. well, after you get through all that fun stuff, because depending on the size of your dog, your arm's probably getting ready to fall off at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> this is why being a groomer is really hard. You're going to want to go to your comb. And what your comb's going to do is it's going to tell you what you missed, what you didn't miss. And you can see here how spaced out these are right here. Um, that is definitely something that you want to use to see where you've missed any types of mats or tangles with your brush. If you missed with that, go back to your brush, and you're going to go back and do that again. When you can get this side of your comb through your dog, you're, you're on your way. You're, you're over halfway done, in my opinion. Then you're going to want to go to the other side of your double-sided comb, and you're going to see how close these together are. That's going to get through that hair a lot finer. It's going to break it apart a lot more. You're pretty much done at this point. When you can get your comb through this or your, this through your hair, you've gotten through what you need to get through. So you really recommend a double-sided comb, double comb and a slicker brush. A slicker brush. For your, your, if it has any length at all. Exactly. Medium much. coat, um, long coat. Super long coats, you want to be a little bit more careful about what brushes you use. I wouldn't recommend a slicker. There are particular coats that out there that require particular br uh, brushes. For example, we do have a beautiful Afghan hound that comes to see us yeah, on so a weekly pretty. basis, and we do have to use a particular brush that I do not own because I don't get to groom. <laughs> He's pretty, He's pretty beautiful. Dog. He's beautiful, but his hair is very much like human hair. So, I mean, yeah, I've, I could use this on my hair if I wanted to, but it's not going to be as comfortable or better for my hair than it would if I were to use a particular brush that we do have. I think it's, uh, I don't know what it's called. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> well, and I mean, that's, um, you know, before you get a breed, we always say, like, research the breed for quality, um, behavior qualities, and what you're getting yourself into. Absolutely. Right? So, like, I have dachshunds. Know that you're going to have a biter. You're going to have a dog that's going to pee in your house. You're going to have, like, some things. There are some breed traits that really are deep and wide oh, yes. in a dachshund. Oh, yes. And so... You know, if you're getting a breed that has longer 
fur or hair that needs to be taken care of. Research how to do that and what tools um, you need. Our grooming salon's always here to answer those questions. Absolutely. And help you access those tools if you need something in particular for in-between groom maintenance. Um, we can help you with those things. I, I am on the regular. If I get a customer out on the floor that's asking about grooming, I'm like, here, let's go. <laughs> let's go talk to them real fast. Let's go talk to the experts because um, they're, they're always going to be able to answer those definitely. questions better um, than I can. Make sure that it's it's a fit for your lifestyle, too. Um, and I'm not just saying, like, don't get a dog because it doesn't fit your lifestyle. You can still get a dog. I mean, let's talk about how realistic it's going to be with you at the house doing the work that we do here yeah. versus you wanting to come in on a four to six week schedule or if I'm going to see you twice a year, you know, yeah. so we'll, we'll know what to expect. So if you, if you get a little bit more of an idea of like, okay, I'm realistically going to spend at least one to three days a week brushing my dog. I should be okay. Roughly depending on the coat. You might want to keep it a little short, but still have some fluff to it. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> think about your budget too. I need mm -hmm. to be in here every six to eight weeks getting my dog groomed. Um, six weeks, preferably yep. eight weeks. If you're really good at groom maintenance, um, and you know, do you have that in your budget to be able to be grooming $120 yep. every six weeks? Um, so those are things to consider when you're thinking, especially about, um, the more doodly type of breeds because yes, they're definitely absolutely. requiring. And they're all over the place and they're not going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. And let's, let's talk about matting because that's one of the biggest misnomers I know that we see up here with customers when we say your dog is matted from head to tail and they go. They don't have any knots. Yeah. I don't understand. And we're like, no, but really, they're completely matted from head to toe. We have to do a complete shave down. And it surprises customers. Almost it does. every time it takes them by surprise. Um, so let's talk about what that means. Sure. Uh, just to go ahead and start that off, uh, you're probably yeah. doing surface brushing. Oh, oh, no. Okay, okay. I think we're still good. We're still good. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably doing surface brushing, which is totally fine to a certain extent, but you want to get down underneath. The coat you want to get to the skin if you're not getting to the skin you're not getting out the knots you're sense. maybe missing this yes down. exactly um so first and foremost if you're not getting down to the skin you're probably surface brushing so you can touch your dog on the outside and it doesn't feel like it has any matting but when someone who's used to doing this on a regular basis can feel your dog they know that it's the top has been brushed but everything underneath needs to be shaped so in order to get underneath that we have to go short otherwise it's a safety hazard for your dog uh either brush burn um just they the, they have feelings like you and I do. So, I mean, if you're going to sit there and brush one spot consecutively over and over and over and over again and not make any progress and realize that the dog's hair is becoming frayed, frayed out and their skin is becoming red and starting to surface bleed a little bit, you know, you're getting brush burn. And those are things that are going to make them feel extremely uncomfortable. That's also a possible vet visit in the future. So we don't want to have to get to those stages. We want to maintain those areas so that we don't have to worry about that so much. Um, so I would say... If your groomer tells you outright, it'd probably be best to go short and start all over again. The cool thing to remember about that is it's hair. It will grow back. <laughs> yeah. Don't be freaked out. Don't be freaked out. And, you know, they pick off how you feel about them and stuff like that. So if you're going to feel like well, they look funny, then they're going to start to feel a little funny. About it. So, <laughs> you know, make sure that they still feel loved. Um, because... Well, and, you know, it really is better for the health. We have a lot of customers who are like, no, I just want to pay the dematting fees. But the reality is, it's I mean, not like, easy, it's not just that easy. We can't just charge a dematting fee because it's uncomfortable for the pet. Exactly. And it does worse for their fur. Like, mm -hmm. I started researching all of this, of course, when I got oh, yeah. involved with mm -hmm. grooming and learned about how it does fray the ends of their hair. It literally splits the end of the fur. And so as soon as you demat it, it's going to mat up right. twice as fast. Twice as fast. Exactly. 100%. So the best plan of action is to shave it all off, start, start again. again, and take care exactly. take good care and do a, do, a, do, that. do a you know a clean fresh start um how do you feel about conditioning sprays i love conditioning sprays um i love conditioners in general i think that they're great i mean i use conditioner in my hair i don't see why it would be any different for a dog to not use conditioner in theirs um there are a lot of maintaining sprays that you can use at your house to um, keep things looking good before you can get into the groomers um, we sell one in the stores called the stuff we actually use that in our grooming salon on our dogs. That, that has been around forever. Too. And you can get it diluted or undiluted. So they'll sell it to you. It's a good stuff. You can use it on a, I believe, a wet dog or a dry dog. Mm -hmm. So all around, that's probably going to be my top pick and just because I've used it for years. You can overuse it to where you're slipping nope. and sliding all over the floor. Mm -hmm. So it's it used sparingly. A couple of spritzes yeah. goes a very long, goes a long way. way. Exactly. 
Um, but back to uh, making sure that you're getting underneath your dog's hair to get mm -hmm. to that. So a lot of reasons that we do have to go short is because we go short to get underneath that matting because if we pull the matting up with a blade, then we're essentially allowing the idea of the dog's skin to get sucked into our blade and cut them. So that's why we say we have to use something short to get underneath the mats. That's just the safest way to go about getting rid of them. That way you don't have to have a vet bill, the dog doesn't have to have a traumatic experience, and everybody wins all the way around. Um, and so, again, it's hair. It grows back. Um, <laughs> well, and trust your groomer. Your groomer knows. Yes. You know, and if you ever have any questions about anything, you know, you can always uh, email up there to the salon. You can always email Allison. You can always come by and ask us questions. We're always here every day of Sunday, pretty much, um, and see about, you know, what you might want to do, get an opinion off of what you think you should do if you're, especially if you're going to be a new dog owner or a new doodle owner or something that has a really thick curly coat or anything of that nature. So, I mean, definitely just, you know, ask questions, it's, you know, knowledge yeah. is power and we'll totally help you out as much as we can. Um, but yeah, no conditions. <laughs> Let's talk about this, the Permanator. So uh, let's talk about women. Oh gosh, we just are, are, I keep touching the table. I know we keep touching the table. Oh. And everything um, talk about the Furminator and when is it a good thing to use? Sure, absolutely. Um, Furminators are really, really, really useful, um, but you do have to be very cautious about these. Um, essentially, what you're brushing your dog with is a blade, um, and then what is it doing? Is it's you don't want to grind down into the hair. Let the brush mm -hmm. do the work. So it's just basically with the hair, do not go against the grain on this. Um, and what it'll do is it starts to pick up the undercoat and these little itty bitty tiny teeth. I would not honestly recommend a super, super short haired dog get brushed out with one of these. I'll stick with your Zoom groom. But if you got a medium to short haired coat, that definitely is shedding out. This should work out perfectly. And I also have this bad boy right here. I, I think it's just doomed. I, I know, right? It is doomed. Or it, does, it was fun there for a minute. And now it's just done. And this is a pretty cool tool for anybody who has a double-coated dog that is a little bit longer hair. Uh, for example, long-coated German Shepherds. Oh, oh gosh, you know. <laughs> really. Okay, we're going to try this, this bad boy and see if this works for us. Boom. Okay, okay I, have, I think this is the one. I think this might be it. <laughs> I think this might be it. This does it. Um, Golden Retrievers. Um, uh, setters, you know, have the double coated on them as well. Anything that's got a double coat because it's a really good de-shed brush or de-shed comb because you're going to want to work out the, the de-sheds with this after you brush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after, yeah. after you do your good solid brushing and get a good brush out, you can even use one of these bad boys on too. Um, after you do that, this will work out your your thicker clumps of de-shed that are coming out. And then it's the same concept of de-matting or trying to maintain a coat. The way that these little teeth are designed is they'll go in smooth here and then they'll hit that undercoat up here and it'll start to pull that out also, which is really nice. I love this good comb. It's coming handy a lot. Yeah, uh, great Pyrenees, sense. stuff like that. Newfoundlands, especially stuff of that nature. Totally. Okay, let's talk about one more of these because you yeah. yeah. frequently see these yeah, and people need to know how to boys. use this because those are dangerous. They are extremely dangerous. I can't tell you how many times. I mean, I've, I cut myself on it before I'm on it. Um, it's a blade. It's, it's what it is. It's essentially, it's a series of blades that you are cutting through the mat to break it apart so that your brushes can get through it easier and this isn't for like all over sheet matted head to tail d-mat situations these are for small situations like you have a knot in the tail that you can't get you have a knot in the ear that you can't get the chest stuff like that you want to stay away from the sanitary region stuff like that uh feet around there you just want to be really careful about what you're doing there because you can you can cause some damage where the skin is definitely more thin. Sure. Um, but essentially, you're, you're just going to start to work it up and start breaking up that, that knot as best you can. And once you've gotten it broken out enough, you can pull out your slicker brush, pull out your comb, yeah, your and get it there. Exactly. And it'll remove the mat without making the appearance of it being shaved out by breaking it into pieces and taking out pieces as opposed to taking out this one large mass. And it's, it's and speaking of that, okay, let us talk really quickly about the importance of not taking scissors to your pet. Oh, please don't. No. Stop it. I will come for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about how that's so important. Because that's super important. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. I've seen it on more than one occasion, and it's it's been in multiple places. I've seen it here. I've seen it when I was mobile. I've seen it. Yeah. You know, I've heard other groomers talk about it. It's it's a very dangerous thing. Uh, essentially, what we're talking about is taking scissors to cut mats out as opposed to shaving your dog. And what you open up to in that situation is generally your dog. 
can very likely be cut open because or you're cat. or cat even worse. I mean, you can grab it. I mean, we can keep going here. <laughs> No, I, we recently had a friend who didn't want to bring his cat in to be groomed yep. and needed to be groomed, and he decided he was going to try to do it himself, yep. and he literally opened his cat up mm -hmm. and filleted his cat yep. and had to go get stitches. I mean, the most expensive grooming he'd ever done, and he did it himself. Yep. <laughs> and on top of that, like, honestly, when they get re, you know, entered back into the grooming situation from something it's like scary. that happening, they're really mad at us. <laughs> We didn't even do anything, yeah. um, typically because they're it's traumatic, you know. I mean, having to getting cut open and then having to go to a strange place to be poked and prodded is definitely not a fun situation. Sure, for anybody. and they all relate it back to exactly, exactly. A quick dog never forgets. I will say that <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, I mean, you know, y'all are welcome. I know uh, y'all are welcome to ask questions here, even if you're watching this after the fact. You can put in questions, and we'll relay them to Elena for answering. Um, I certainly have learned some tricks of the trade for yep. as long as I've been involved in all of this, but I am not a groomer. Well, that's the cool thing about this industry is that I'm still learning cool things yeah. that are new and easier or different ways to do things. You know, it's just more than one ways to groom a cat, I guess, than skin a cat. Um, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's an ever growing industry. I feel like the industry is getting more and more popular. Um, I think that uh, breeds are, even though they're getting more extreme, I still think that a lot of people still lean towards the classics. Um, and you know, we're here for all of them. So just give us a call and we're going to get you. In. But, um, one thing I definitely want to talk about before you guys yeah, go, we for have, sure. this is just maintenance for you now. Um, at the house, we use them here in the salon. It's a busy feet. Mm -hmm. And this is a container you can actually buy. Um, this is a service that you guys do yep. up here. Do. So uh, talk about the busy feet sure. and what it does and what it's good for. Sure. Absolutely. Um, it is a white tea based, uh, block essentially that dissolves in warm water. And your dog will soak in it for about three to four minutes, roughly, just to pause like up to the ankle. And it essentially is to help them not lick their feet if they have any seasonal allergies, if they're having any allergies in general, uh, if they're a nervous lickers. Typically, it'll usually deter those a little bit also um, to make because they walk on their feet. That's you know, and if that's irritated and raw and red and horrible, it's gonna hurt to walk, and that's not fun for anybody. Yeah. So definitely something I would recommend. I've actually used it on my own personal dogs. I have numerous clients who come in and go, yeah, let me get that busy feet again. That was great. Um, and it will do wonderful things for your dog as far as making sure to help protect as well as heal those feet and keep them from be wanting to be licked because they're feeling better. They're feeling refreshed. They're feeling cleaned up. And then on top of that, you can use this stuff right here, which we got in. And you can also... Yeah, it's a deep cleaning spray by Warren London that goes in conjunction with the um, fizzy feet mm -hmm. and so you, you can get this bottle and after you have the fizzy feet you do this in between the fizzy feet so 24 hours you can use it up too yeah and so it helps to stop the licking um we i talked with them recently when i was at the trade show and they they were highly recommending that customers who get fizzy feet get this spray to use at home yep. in between to lengthen the results absolutely um that they were achieving with the fizzy feet and i mean the fizzy feet brings you know we've talked about the color addition and the things mm -hmm. that you guys do with coloring but you guys also do toothbrushing oh, y'all yeah. do a lot of add-on services <laughs> up here we talk do. about some of those sure. add-on services uh, we have specialized sham shampoos and conditioners that will help your dog as far as if you just have a, a your dog's fine and they just want to have a smoother softer coat we can have things for that if you're having dry itchy skin we have things for that here as well mm -hmm. um if you want their teeth brushed um if you want to get uh the super teeth brushing which is their plaque cleanse you know we do offer that as well um uh we do have a i love the mud sea bath i love the mud sea bath. Mm -hmm. that's my favorite hands down it's a good conditioning product that you typically use before your bath to help get the coat ready and get rid of all the oils and residues before you wash uh, we have upgraded shampoos. I mean, goodness Milk gracious. Bath. Milk bath. Yeah, we just got, she just picked us up some really cool butter wash stuff to help soften your kin, your, your dog's coat. So, I mean, it's it's really a lot of, lots of additional <laughs> things you can get done. It's just like when you go to the salon. Exactly. There's lots of new things that you can do. Always new products out there. Um, you guys just went to a grooming show as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not too, too long ago. Um, so our grooming salon is always trying to stay on top of the new products and the new things that are available out there for use. Yeah, things that make it easier for you guys to maintain. Things for making our job easier, so we can make it easier on your kids. You know, your little fur babies. Yeah. Yeah. Here in the salon. So yeah, absolutely. 
Um, well, I hope that this has given you guys some information on how to maintain some coats in between. Like I said, if you have specific questions, you can post them in the comments and um, we will keep an eye on those and respond for you. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to our salon. You may not get somebody on the phone um, just because our phone it just doesn't stop ringing. It doesn't stop ringing. <laughs> I've been over here filling in before, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't ever want to hear a phone ring again <laughs> after I leave here from working for a day. It just rings uh, um, all day. People are very busy and always trying to get grooming appointments, and we appreciate that. But you may have to leave a message if you try to call, but we will call you back. And if you would rather just shoot us over an email, the groomer at allpetsconsidered.com is the email address for our grooming salon. Or you can shoot me one, support at allpetsconsidered.com. And um, you can pop by the store and come and talk with everybody at the grooming salon. We can talk with you in the store about the grooming tools that we sell. We can also talk to you about skin and coat from the inside out at the store. And that's something that, you know, also helps with the skin and coat. And it's such a big difference. People don't realize. I mean, you are what you eat. Exactly. And skin and coat make a big difference. And this month, our um, subscription box is all about skin and coat supplements. Cool. Um, so it has all kinds of omegas in it and all kinds of good coat, skin and coat supplements um, and some great shampoo by Nudie, which you guys use yes, over here too. Um, so all kinds of great things that you guys can get over here at a grooming salon. Uh, you will need to plan ahead. I do recommend booking your grooming appointment in advance because if you call us the day before you need an appointment, we probably won't be able to see you. Slim to none chance, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but if you're planning ahead five to six weeks, we can definitely get you in. And, um, I recommend pre-booking your appointment when you're checking out. That's also a good way to maintain your dog's coat is to pre-book your appointment before you leave after your appointment so that you know that they're coming back in to get taken care of again. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's, and those nice. kind of things, if you're doing that, you're going to avoid extra charges here at the grooming salon because you won't have the dematting charges. You won't have special handling charges special for your dog, handling. not liking what we're doing, you know, because it, it might not feel good to them. Yeah. So, I mean, you can avoid some additional charges, make your trip a little bit more pleasant on the pocketbook and you make your pet's trip more pleasant because it's not as painful. So, I definitely want to invite you to come up here to our grooming salon, but also ask questions. If you have specific questions, we'll be happy to address them. Thank you for joining yeah, us today, Elena. Absolutely. And if you want to check out any of these new Warren London products, we have them up here at the salon. Um, we'll put them out on the shelf today. And again, if y'all have any questions, let us know. We're we're looking forward to what questions you might have. I, I guarantee you I'm going to get a doodle question. Oh, probably. You. Probably. Um, yeah. I'd be surprised if you don't. And that's okay. <laughs> it yeah. is. Ask it's just it. such a popular breed. We're seeing so much doodle cross population. And I, you know, when I we first started getting into the doodle craze, we had this like they don't match kind of philosophy. That's and a load. That <laughs> is a load of baloney. Um, they absolutely match, just yeah. like any other dog. And maybe mm. worse, because they have two different kinds of exactly. breed. Um, Mix the golden types. with the poodle, and then now it's like. St. Bernard with the poodle and the Newfie with the poodle and then the Schnauzers with, I don't know. They've got it every time. They do. They do everything. <laughs> so you've got two different breed types kind of colliding. So it is, it's a lot to work with. It do. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today and watching through our fun little how-to from home. And if you need any of these tools, you can come up and visit us here at the store. We've got supply. Sweet. Okay. All thanks, right. Elena. Uh, yeah, no problem.